It is hard to imagine. Only 10 of the dirtiest rivers in the world carry in their waters 90% of all the plastic that enters the world's oceans, causing enormous damage to all life. This peculiar heat parade consists of the largest rivers on the planet. Their main distinguishing feature is a high population living on their banks, which affects the quality of water in these waterways. We have made a list of the most polluted rivers in the world. Yangtze, China The Yangtze is the longest and most abundant river in Eurasia, the third longest and full-flowing river in the world. It flows through China and is about 6,300 kilometers long, with a basin area of 1,808,500 square kilometers. The Yangtze Basin covers about one-fifth of the territory of China and about one-third of the population of the country lives there. According to statistics, this river carries 1.5 million tons of plastic annually. Hai River, China Hai River is a river in the east of China, formed at the confluence of the Bei River, Wei River, Zia River and Daqing River. From its mouth to its convergence with the Bohai Gulf of the Yellow Sea, the Wei River is 102 kilometers long, and from its source, it has a length of 1,090 kilometers. About 11% of China's population lives in the Hai River Basin, and 10% of the country's usable land is located in the basin, which is why up to 70% of the river flow is used for economic purposes. Today, the Hai River is the second most polluted river in China. In recent years, due to the growth of cities and industry in the Hai River Basin, its volume has decreased significantly. Many small and some of the larger tributaries have almost dried up, further increasing the degree of pollution in the lower parts of the river. Huanghe, China The Huanghe is one of the largest rivers in Asia that is flowing in China. In Chinese, its name means Yellow River, which is due to the abundance of sediment that gives a yellowish tint to its waters. Eroding the lowest plateau and the Shanxi Mountains, the Huanghe carries 1.3 billion tons of suspended sediment annually, ranking first among the world's rivers in this respect. The intense deposition of sediment in the lower reaches raises the channel located at heights of 3 to 10 meters above the adjacent plains. For protection against floods, the Huanghe and its tributaries are enclosed by a large-scale system of dams, the total length of which is about 5,000 kilometers. The Mekong, various countries. The Mekong is a river in China, Myanmar, Laos, Thailand, Cambodia, and Vietnam, partially forms the border of Laos with Myanmar and Thailand, and is the largest river on the Indochinese Peninsula. It is about 4,500 kilometers long, and its basin area is 810,000 square kilometers. The rivers and lakes of the Mekong Basin are rich in fish, mainly of the carp family, a lot of waterfowl, preserved river dolphins, and crocodiles, mainly in Cambodia. Zhujiang, China The Zhujiang is the third longest river in China, after the Yangtze and the Huanghe, and is about 2,200 kilometers long. It is the second place in terms of a full-flowing river, second only to the Yangtze. The Zhujiang River has developed pearl fishing, which gave the river its name. It originally referred only to the navigable arm of the Xi River Delta, on which Guangzhou is located, but later the name Pearl River was used for the entire Xi River Basin. Indus River, China, India, Pakistan the Indus River is a major river in South Asia, originating in China in the Himalayas and flowing for the most part through the territory of northwestern India and Pakistan. The Indus River is 3,180 kilometers long and has a basin area of 980,000 square kilometers. The river has such a unique phenomenon because of the sea water flowing into the river with salt water traveling up to 75 kilometers upstream. The lack of fresh water and the influx of seawater led to the destruction of large areas of agricultural land. Several coastal settlements ceased to exist, and several hundred thousand people were forced to change their place of residence. The strong wave energy inherent in the Indus Delta, coupled with the cessation of sediment supply, caused desert-like conditions and deformation of the coastline. Ganges, India and Bangladesh 
The Ganges is one of the full-flowing and longest 2,700 kilometers rivers in South Asia. The area of the river basin is 1,060,000 square kilometers. The river is heavily used for irrigation. The Ganges Basin, with an area of over 1 million square kilometers, is one of the most densely populated regions of Earth. Navigation on the river is now somewhat complicated and is only possible from the mouth to the city of Kanpur by flat-bottomed boats. The Ganges is the main waterway in Bengal and the northeastern states of India and is often regarded as a symbol of the whole country. Amur, Russia and China the Amur is a river in the Far East in East Asia. It flows through Russia and the border between Russia and China. Its length is 2,824 kilometers from the confluence of the Shilka and the Argon. By the area of its basin of 1,855,000 square kilometers, the Amur takes the fourth place among the Russian rivers after the Yenisei, the Ob and the Lena and tenth place among the rivers of the world. The river has recorded excesses of MAC for phenol, nitrates and microbiological parameters. The Nile – Different Countries The Nile is a river in Africa, one of the largest river systems in the world. The Nile water system is considered the longest on Earth. The Nile River Basin covers an area of 349,000 square kilometers. Almost the entire population of Egypt lives in the delta and valley of the Nile and nearly the entire Egyptian economy is based there. The largest cities on the river are Cairo, Khartoum, Aswan and Alexandria. The waters of the river are used for irrigation and power generation. Niger – Various Countries The Niger is the most important river in West Africa. It is 4,180 kilometers long and has a basin area of 2,000,000 117,700 square kilometers and is the third for these parameters in Africa after the Nile and Congo. The most fertile lands are in the inner delta and the mouth of the river. The river carries 67 million tons of silt per year. Navigation on the river is developed only in some areas, especially from the city of Niamey to the junction with the ocean. The river is home to a large number of fish, such as perch, carp, etc which is why fishing is well developed among the locals. There are many myths and misconceptions associated with the topic of radiation. Not everyone knows what radiation is and what its effects are, especially given the fact that radiation is not visible. So, it turns out that everyone has some idea of radiation but doesn't know exactly how to deal with it and in general, what this word means. When people talk about radiation, they mean ionizing radiation, thanks to which it's possible to see through a person. Unfortunately, humanity didn't immediately understand how dangerous radiation is and how to use it correctly. Historical examples such as chocolate and water with radium, children's play sets and cosmetics with radium are proof of this. Today, scientists have finally been able to understand the dangers and benefits of radiation and use it in industry, medicine, sterilizing products, and power generation. Let's figure out what myths about radiation exist. Myth 1. Radioactive objects always glow. This myth can be considered only partially true. Radium impurities can cause a slight green glow on contact with paint. As for the uranium salts, they do not glow at all. Generally, most people have learned about the glow of radioactive objects from video games and movies, but this is not entirely true. An example of a glow in the hands of clocks that were made in the 20s of the 20th century. To make the clock hands glow in the dark, radium was added to a paint based on zinc sulfide and copper. That's why the hands of the clock glowed green. So if you have such a clock, then the hands on them are still glowing and the radiation from them is still going on. We can also encounter luminescence in nature. With plants and fireflies, however, the luminescence is not related to radiation at all. Radioluminescence can only occur when interacting with other substances. Myth 2. Radiation is useful in small doses. When using radon baths, the patient is immersed in radon mineral water or uses air that is enriched with radon-222. 
However, there is no confirmed scientific evidence about the usefulness of radon-222. Many attribute this to the placebo effect. Myth 3. Fluorography and X-rays are dangerous. The main danger of radiation is the amount of exposure and depends on the type of radiation. X-rays and fluorography involve the use of very small doses of radiation. The natural radiation background is formed around Earth and people. This is due to radioactive substances that are in the soil, air, water, cosmic radiation, nuclear energy production, and many others. The real danger comes only from enormous doses of radiation which can kill a person. Such methods of body examination as X-rays and computer tomography contains micron parts of radiation which are not life-threatening at all. Myth 4. You can use alcohol to remove radionuclides from your body. Scientists all over the world warn that any strong alcoholic drinks won't be able to help in the fight against the possible effects of radiation on the body in the future. It's precisely at the time of exposure to a small degree of radiation that alcohol can protect against radiation, as has been confirmed by some studies. However, preparation in advance or after years will not give any effect, except for harm to health. Myth 5. People who are constantly exposed to radiation develop immunity. Radioactive radiation acts in a completely different way than many viruses to which immunity can be developed. Scientists have not researched this topic, and in the scientific world, almost no one believes in the possibility of an organism getting used to radioactive radiation. Myth 6. A person exposed to radiation becomes a source of radiation. A person who has received a dose of radiation doesn't become a radiation emitter. On the other hand, his clothes that have come into contact with the radioactive materials can be dangerous to others. That's why such clothing must be disposed of. Only a person whose body was injected with the radioactive drugs can be called a source of radiation, but for a very short time because such drugs quickly disintegrate and do not pose a threat to others. Myth 7. Iodine protects from radiation. Iodine can protect the body from the effects of radiation, but it may help a little. It accumulates in the thyroid gland. When a radioactive release occurs, there is a large amount of radioactive iodine-131 on objects and in the air. Our thyroid gland absorbs any iodine, even radioactive. Therefore, when emitting radiation, it's recommended to take iodine so that the thyroid gland has received everything it needs and radioactive iodine can be exerted from the body. The fact that it is necessary to take iodine or other drugs and vitamins should be reported by the Ministry of Emergencies. Myth 8. Radiation causes mutation. Thanks to sci-fi movies, many people believe that radiation can cause superpowers in humans. The truth is, the effect of radiation on the body can lead to mutations, but completely different, so a person won't become a new superhero. Radiation exposure can damage DNA helices. Quite often, the damage affects one helix, and then the damaged areas are replaced by nucleotides. In the case when both DNA helices are damaged, the genetic information is lost, which can lead to the launching of the cell's self-destruction mechanism. Approximately the same principle is followed by radiation therapy for cancer patients. Even cancer cells begin to self-destruct when serious structural changes occur in them. However, there is another side to such therapy, when a healthy cell can become cancerous when it is damaged. You don't have to worry too much even if you forgot your sunscreen. Being in the shade, the background radiation won't cause you serious harm because a person gets used to it. However, if you're in an area of high radiation or a hot country, without proper protection, your epithelial cells can become damaged, which in the worst case can lead to the development of melanoma. Myth 9. There is constant radiation from computers and TVs. If you use a computer with an LCD monitor, then you have nothing to worry about. The misconception originated with the inscription, low radiation, 
which was translated incorrectly. The correct translation is low radiation, in the case of the monitor, electromagnetic radiation. However, a small amount of radiation may actually be emitted from old CRT monitors. Myth 10. Radiation is a human handiwork. In many ways, the death of people and cases of radioactive contamination are associated with human activities. So many believe that radiation was created by people. Well, this assumption is incorrect and radiation is associated with natural origin. It has always been on our planet and will be after us. The sun's rays are also radiation that passes through the filter of our atmosphere. In hotter countries, where the sun's rays pass directly, the background radiation is higher than at the poles. Space has its own radiation, which are high-energy particles that ionize atoms. They can lead to structural changes and the destruction of molecules in our body. In some atoms, nuclei are unstable, so they can go into a stable state by emitting particles. This is how alpha, beta and gamma radiation are produced. Such particles are everywhere, and that's why there is natural background radiation on our planet. Myth 11. Lead protects against radiation. Many believe that lead is the only way to protect against radiation. There is some truth here, but this is not completely correct information. There are different types and kinds of radiation that emit different particles. Not all of these particles can be trapped by lead. For some, it could be useless and of no use at all. For example, alpha rays are effectively trapped by thin tissue. Wearing clothes and glasses prevents radiation from reaching your skin. You can't be harmed by this radiation. Tin foil will be sufficient to protect against beta radiation, which has a lower ionizing capacity. Gamma radiation has a small ionizing power, but the penetrating power of this radiation is the highest. Therefore, such radiation is considered the most dangerous because it's difficult to protect oneself against it. It's against gamma radiation that lead can protect you. It will be more effective and will be able to trap more particles due to its density. Nevertheless, lead can't be considered magical protection against radiation. Its layer must be thick enough to protect against serious radiation. Therefore, in the construction of bunkers and nuclear power plants, the thickest layer of concrete is used, which is not as toxic as lead and is much easier to operate and build. Myth 12. It's impossible to protect yourself from radiation in everyday life. Anyone can protect their family and themselves if they buy a device such as household dosimeter. It can check the room for radiation cleanliness, check items and foods for radioactivity, check construction and finishing materials, the place for the construction of the building, and much more. When you are in the blazing sun, always use sunscreen and get into the shade whenever possible. Avoid traveling to places where radiation testing has taken place and where disasters have occurred. Like any natural factor that surrounds us, radiation has positive and negative aspects. It's worthwhile to make good use of what radiation can do for people without forgetting about its risks. The dog is a friend of a man. They have lived in our neighborhood for a long time. The dog is not just a pet. They help the police, help border guards. People also take dogs with them hunting. These animals delight us and bring us positive emotions every day. That's why not everyone realizes some dogs can be very dangerous to others. This topic always leads to considerable controversy among dog breeders because as a rule, it all depends on the upbringing of the animal. Any breed can be raised as the sweetest creature or you can turn it into an aggressive monster. Not all dog breeds were bred to touch and delight their owners. Some breeds are genetically engineered to be aggressive and insubordinate. However, this doesn't mean that such a breed shouldn't be bred just that their owners should pay more attention to the upbringing and training of such animals. So, the most dangerous dogs are… Rottweiler Rottweilers are quite powerful dogs, distinguished by their large size. These animals are very loyal. Rottweilers are very fond of children and make great dogs for families. Except for strangers they don't like and show aggression to them. 
Often, the Rottweiler doesn't understand whether they are joking with it or really threatening it, so you need to be on guard all the time with these animals. Without proper upbringing and a competent owner, the Rottweiler can pose a danger to outsiders. American Pit Bull Terrier This dog is considered one of the most dangerous dogs for a reason. The pit bull was bred to corral cattle and later pit bulls were used for dog fighting. The pit bull terrier is characterized by fearlessness and aggression. For a long time, the breeders of this breed have been strenuously supporting these qualities of the animal. Therefore, if you decide to get a pit bull, you should pay a lot of attention to the upbringing of the dog and teach it to get along with other animals. German Boxer The Mastiff and Bulldog breeds were used to breed the Boxer. The German Boxer is characterized by stubbornness, quite inquisitive and fearless. It is easy to train and it obeys its master. Without training and upbringing, this animal will strive to dominate a man. As a rule, boxers are not aggressive at all. If a boxer decides to attack, however, it will hold its victim as long as the victim can resist. Therefore, its death grip is quite dangerous. Training of this dog should be started as early as when it's a puppy, so that the animal knows exactly who the master is. Doberman The Doberman belongs to the service breeds. It was bred at the end of the 19th century in Germany. The Doberman is distinguished by its intelligence and especially needs the attention of a loving owner. These dogs are very active, always loyal to people, and are choleric by temperament. They can show spontaneous aggression. That's why if the Doberman feels even the slightest threat, it immediately becomes aggressive, attacking the victim, it bites in different places. However, if you pay proper attention to training the Doberman, you will get a great friend and protector for the entire family. Alaskan Malamute These large dogs are a bit like wolves in appearance. The Malamute is quite a friendly and cheerful dog, but has some hidden flaws. These are precisely the kind of dogs that continuously need the attention and care of their owner. During training, there may be difficulties because of the stubbornness and resentfulness of the Malamute. If the owner can earn respect and prove his intellectual superiority, then you will get a loyal friend who will unquestioningly obey your commands. The Malamute is quite dangerous because it can attack a person even from boredom and not just from the lack of proper upbringing. Wolf Dog This breed was created by crossing a wolf and a German Shepherd. This unusual breed closely resembles a wolf but is smaller in size. The Wolf Dog is a dog with a difficult temperament. It gets along badly with other animals, which is why you shouldn't get another pet. The wolf dog has an excellent hunting instinct. It needs space and it simply can't live in an ordinary apartment. Because of the lack of suitable conditions, this breed becomes inadequate and can become quite aggressive towards others. German Shepherd This breed is very intelligent and not aggressive at all. These dogs are very loyal to their owner. They will obey any of his commands. Therefore, a shepherd trained to attack can become a dangerous weapon. However, with a competent upbringing, a German shepherd will become the favorite of the entire family and a loyal friend for many years. Bull Mastiff The Bull Mastiff was bred in the early 19th century by crossbreeding a Mastiff and a Bulldog. This breed was originally intended to help rangers guard the woods. The Bull Mastiff is considered one of the best watchdog breeds, but you shouldn't keep the Bull Mastiff on a chain. It loves freedom. This loyal animal is fearless and will protect its owner, even risking its life. Bull Mastiffs are cheerful and love children. However, you shouldn't leave your child alone with this animal because the dog, while playing, may accidentally knock your child down. Bull Mastiff has a serious garden instinct, so it can perceive very noisy and active games of children as a threat and rush to defense. This animal is very aggressive to other dogs and cats, especially to those who intrude on its territory. Presa Canario This breed was initially intended for the protection of cattle. The Presa Canario is distinguished by its impressive size, fearlessness and loyalty. This dog will always remain wary of strangers. Particular attention should be paid to the upbringing of the animal as early as when it's a puppy. 
The Presa Canario has great strength and power, which should always be controlled. You shouldn't stop training and drills, because the Presa Canario can get out of control. This giant can easily knock an adult down and cause serious harm, which is why small children shouldn't be left unsupervised around this dog. Even while playing, the Presa Canario can accidentally injure a child. American Bulldog The American Bulldog is a dog defender. It was bred to help farmers corral their cattle. For the family where the Bulldog grew up, it will be a sweet and kind friend, but will always be distrustful of strangers and just passers-by. Just like with other large dogs, you shouldn't leave the Bulldog with young children. The American Bulldog is characterized by increased aggression towards cats and other dogs. Therefore, you shouldn't go out for a walk with a Bulldog without a leash and a muzzle. Tosa Inu This fighting dog breed was bred in Japan in the 19th century. Tosa Inu was the result of crossbreeding Mastiff, Bulldog and Terrier. It's quite an aggressive dog characterized by determination and stubbornness. Fighting with the enemy, he will fight to the last. However, as in the case with other animals, with the right upbringing and training, you can get a loyal and sweet friend. Nevertheless, the animal has innate aggression and doesn't get along with others at all. You shouldn't have this breed for families with children. When you are walking this dog, don't forget the leash and muzzle. Cani Corso This breed is a guard dog. It is distinguished by its large size and the considerable weight of up to 60 kilograms. The Cani Corso is a member of the Mastiff group and is considered the most obedient and intelligent of its kind. This breed learns quickly and easily obeys commands. They are inquisitive and quite calm. Cani Corso can easily be taken hunting or used for police work. Representatives of this breed get along well with children, but increased activity of a child can be mistaken for aggression. If you are thinking about getting this breed, you should know that the Cane Corso absolutely don't get along with other animals. American Band Dog The American Band Dog has been bred from crossbreeding different types of Mastiffs. It's a reliable and loyal friend, guardian and protector. If you take care of its correct and competent upbringing, you will get a friendly and affectionate dog who gets along well even with children. If the American Band Dog grew up with another dog or a cat, then it will perceive these animals as family members, but it will be very aggressive and unfriendly to other animals and strangers. That's why it is necessary to take a muzzle and a leash for a walk with the American Band Dog. Dogo Argentino This breed was originally bred in Argentina to hunt pumas and other large animals. This is quite a hard breed that likes to dominate. Therefore, this animal will obey only a strong and intelligent owner whom it will respect. Dogo Argentino quickly becomes attached to all family members and becomes a loyal friend. Dogo Argentino is wary and even aggressive towards strangers and thanks to its hunting instinct will chase all escaping animals. Borbul The Borbul belongs to the service breeds. It was bred in South Africa, but in some countries it is banned breed that can't be bred. Only a competent handler should be the owner of the Borbul, as these animals can be kept without proper training and constant control. This breed can get along with cats and is great with children with whom it grew up. However, it is aggressive toward other dogs and can even kill an animal. It is a quite large dog, which can weigh up to 90 kilograms. Bully Kuta this breed was bred in Pakistan and is secondarily called the Pakistani Mastiff. Bully Kuta is a little amenable to training and has quite a hard character. Only an experienced, strong-willed owner should breed such an animal, then the dog will be a loyal friend and protector. These animals do not get along with other animals and can even kill a rival. This breed is not suitable as a pet in a family with children. Goldong this breed is very popular in Pakistan and India. The dog is of medium size and has a strong-built body. These animals are distinguished by loyalty, intelligence, and very attached to their family and will protect the owner at all costs. Despite its positive qualities, the gold dong is very aggressive to others and likes to dominate. It is not worth having this dog in a family with children, but it is an excellent choice for guarding its owner and territory. Caucasian Shepherd Dog the Caucasian Shepherd is considered one of the largest breeds of dog. 
This dog needs constant control and training from early on as a puppy. This is a very good-natured and calm dog, but at the slightest threat, it rushes to defend its owner and territory. The Caucasian Shepherd dog will be a devoted friend and the best protector of all family members. It will be an affectionate and kind dog, but only with the right training. English Mastiff Originally, this aggressive dog was used to protect property and guard it. Today, representatives of this breed are kind and affectionate dogs who love children. They don't pose any serious danger to people. However, you shouldn't leave small children alone to play with the animal to avoid unwanted injuries. Rhodesian Ridgeback This is a hunting breed that originated in Zimbabwe. They are intelligent, active animals that quickly become attached to the entire family and children. They are very agile and energetic. When going out for a walk, don't leave the animal without attention, because with a strong hunter instinct, this animal can pose a threat to others. Moscow Watchdog This breed was bred by crossing the Caucasian Shepherd, St. Bernard and Russian Hound. The Moscow Watchdog has a hard character and is difficult to obey. Nevertheless, with a strong owner, the dog will gladly obey commands. This breed is quite friendly and gets along well with all family members and children. Bull Terrier If you want to get a dog, you shouldn't start with a Bull Terrier. This animal has a hard character and it's not an easy dog to train at all. The Bull Terrier was originally bred as a fighting breed. That's why it is quite an aggressive animal. Only with proper upbringing and the right approach, you can get a loyal and obedient pet. For a family with a child, you should still choose another breed, more affectionate, calm, and loving children. The dog has a strong pursuit instinct, so when walking, you should take care of the safety of others, put on a muzzle for a bull terrier. As you can see, any dog without proper upbringing and competent training is capable of becoming an uncontrollable danger. Any of even the most aggressive animals can be made a loyal friend and a family member, just as the most harmless animal can turn into an evil monster. Are you afraid of dogs? Insects. Many people get goosebumps all over their bodies just from this word alone. This is not surprising at all because there are so many dangerous insects around the world. In total, there are about 1 million species of insects on Earth. Do you suffer from arachnophobia? Believe me, spiders are not the worst thing you might encounter in nature. We present you with a list of the most dangerous insects on the planet. The top of the rating of the most dangerous insects opens, of course, the mosquito. Every year, more than 2 million people die because of this creature. Most often, mosquitoes are carriers of malaria. It affects the brain, liver, lungs, and cardiovascular system. But they can also infect people with West Nile fever, encephalitis, dengue virus, yellow, and tropical fevers. A mosquito becomes a carrier of malaria when it bites an infected person. Malaria spreads throughout the insect's body, and after four days, the mosquito is a carrier of this deadly disease and remains dangerous for another six weeks. Malaria is widespread in African countries, but they don't even try to fight it. Tsetse fly There are 23 species of flies by this name. They carry a terrible disease called African trypanosomiasis, Tsetse flies are the worst enemy of the inhabitants of tropical regions of Africa. Each year, up to 7,000 people die from sleeping sickness. During the disease, a person begins to have a fever, insomnia, headaches, and swelling of the lymph nodes, affecting the immune and nervous systems. If 
treatment is not started in time, it's almost always fatal. Tsetse flies, like mosquitoes, are also blood-sucking insects, but the bite mark is much more serious. The fly's tiny teeth bite into the skin and leave a noticeable mark. The insect reaches a length of 1.5 cm and is distinguished by its yellowish color. The tsetse fly lives mainly in Africa. According to statistics, about 200,000 people in Uganda have died from a tsetse fly bite. Bullet Ant The largest ant, which reaches a length of 2.5 cm. You can meet this creature in the forests of Paraguay and Nicaragua at the base of large trees. The ant lives in large colonies in nests, and its bite is excruciating. The pain after the bite can last for 24 hours. Giant Peacock Caterpillar This caterpillar was nicknamed the Killer Caterpillar for a reason. After meeting it, several people die every year. It lives in South America. The caterpillar throws out the strongest poison located on the bristles, which leads to hemorrhage and causes gangrene. Fire Ant There are more than 280 species of this ant on Earth. These small insects are aggressive, especially during the defense of their antils. Such ants attack in groups of up to hundreds of insects. They bite frequently, causing burning pain. That's why they got such a name. Fire ants are native to South America, but today, this insect could be found all over the world. Centipede The centipede lives everywhere. Almost all people have the most pleasant feelings about its appearance. A centipede bite is quite painful, but a fatal case is possible only if you are allergic to its poison. This is perhaps the most harmless creature on our list. Kissing Bug Like most of the most dangerous insects, the kissing bug also feeds on blood. It got its name because it bites people during sleep on the lips and eyes. He is attracted by the carbon dioxide released by breathing. This unpleasant creature is very dangerous because it's a carrier of the parasitic trypanosome, which causes Chagas disease. Because of this disease, about 12,000 people die every year. Symptoms may not appear immediately. After a few weeks, a person starts feeling weakness, pain throughout the body, and the tonsils swell. The kissing bug lives mainly in the United States, but can be found in Africa, Australia, and Asia. It has black and red colors. It's dangerous not only for people, but also for animals. There is no vaccine for Chagas disease yet, and doctors use anti-parasitic drugs for treatment. Japanese Giant Hornet This hornet species is one of the largest. The largest individuals reach 4 to 5 centimeters in length. Each hornet can kill up to 40 bees in just one minute. Hornets live in large colonies, where their number can reach up to 700. They feed mainly on honeybee larvae and are very aggressive. The sting of the giant Japanese hornet can cause a severe allergic reaction. Up to 40 people die each year from its sting. Asian Giant Hornet This is the largest hornet that can be found on our planet. Its length reaches 5 cm and its wingspan is 7.5 cm. The hornet can sting many times with its 6 mm stinger. You can find the Asian giant hornet in Asia in the mountains of Japan. The pain of an Asian giant hornet is so intense that it's often compared to having a hot nail driven into your leg. But in addition to painful sensations during the hornet's sting, it also emits a specific smell that attracts other hornets. About 70 people die from the bite of an Asian giant hornet every year. African Honey Bee This famous bee killer is one of the most aggressive insects on the planet. These bees hunt in a group, can sting several times and chase their prey for more than a kilometer. Its stings are especially dangerous on the eyes and face. Bees live in a huge colonies of up to 80,000 individuals. In the 1950s, an attempt to increase honey production resulted in thousands of hybrids. In 1956, Brazilian biologist Warwick Kerr decided to add some traits of African bees to European bees. In his opinion, this hybrid would live well in the hot tropics and give more honey. This is how the Africanized bee appeared, which was very aggressive. 
under very mysterious circumstances, about 20 colonies were released. The biologist hoped that the bees would quickly die, but they began to interbreed with drones and produce offspring. A new species of bees settled in South America and then in North America. Already in the 1980s, the hybrid could be found in Mexico and the United States. Now, these bees can be found in Texas, California, Arizona, Nevada, Florida, and other southern states. Over the 60 years of their existence, these hybrids have resulted in the death of more than 400 people and hundreds of animals, domestic and wild. Their attack can be fatal because they all together rush to defend their hive and their number can exceed 10,000 individuals. Therefore, everyone who is within a radius of 5 meters from the hive will be chased by bees. Oriental Rat Flea These fleas live where rats are. They live with them in the neighborhood and periodically switch to a rodent to refresh themselves. Females absorb more blood than males. The danger of these fleas is that they are active carriers of rat typhus and plague. The flea doesn't leave its prey and is on the rodent or in the neighborhood. Each species poses a serious danger to humans and animals. They can also infect their prey with helmets. Their saliva contains allergens that can cause reactions in both humans and animals. Typically, their bites are harmless and painless but can cause itching and inflammation. Often, by scratching the wound, animals introduce themselves to a second infection. Widespread infection after multiple bites can cause fatal anemia, especially in small animals. The Black Plague epidemic, carried by rats, claimed millions of lives in Europe in the 14th century. Today, the disease is very rare in Europe, but it has progressed in poorer countries. Dorylus or Siafo These are nomadic blind ants that live in African countries. Today, there are more than 20 million of them. Although these ants are blind, thanks to pheromones, they know exactly where to go. They bite everyone they meet with their powerful hook-like jaws. Bites from these insects kill over 50 people every year. Bites can lead to serious complications and without medical attention, a person can die. A huge variety of different creatures live on our planet. Many of them are harmless, but some are quite dangerous. The danger of insects lies in their very tiny size, so people often don't even notice them. But when you're in the forest or in nature, you should always take care of your safety. Choose things that cover as much as possible all parts of your body and use special repellents that will protect you from insect bites. Well, which insect causes fear in you? Who among us hasn't dreamed of having a house by the sea? How we look forward to a vacation to go to the sea and enjoy the bright sun and foam waves. But many seas on our planet are not as welcoming and affectionate as they seem at first glance. Huge poisonous jellyfish, underwater predators, unexplained phenomena, dangerous currents are just a small part of the possible reasons why you don't want to swim in most seas. Sargasso Sea This sea covers an area of over 6 million square kilometers and is surrounded by the Atlantic Ocean. There is almost no wind at this sea because the sea is located in a zone of high atmospheric pressure. That is why a lot of ships disappeared here, which simply could not budge because of the complete calm. Also, huge algae plantations become a trap for ships, which impede the movements of the ship. Also, this sea has received ill fame because it is located in the mysterious zone of the Bermuda Triangle, in which many ships and planes have disappeared. Many seafarers to this day try to keep away from this place. Caribbean Sea Most people associate the Caribbean Sea with magical nature and turquoise water. It is just a paradise on Earth. There are many modern resorts, incredibly beautiful landscapes shrouded in mysteries and legends about pirates. You always need to be on the alert because there are over 600 species of marine flora in the Caribbean Sea. Here you can stumble upon poisonous physalia. These creatures look incredible. They shimmer with many colors and look like enormous bubbles. But don't try to touch these unusual creatures. You can immediately get a dose of toxins that are injected in your skin. 
Physalia venom is very similar to cobra venom. Timor Sea The Timor Sea covers an area of about 430,000 square kilometers. It washes the island of Timor, part of Australia and the coast of Indonesia. The sea area is located in the zone of tectonic plate splitting, which is why its depth doesn't exceed 250 meters. The only place with a great depth is the Timor Trough, a depth of 3,300 meters. This is the most suitable place for the emergence of powerful typhoons. The raging cyclone Tracy seriously damaged the city of Darwin in 1974, and in 2017, the cyclone Francis impressed everyone with its power. Gusts of wind reaches 120 km per hour. Such weather events seriously affect the work of oil refineries. When the hurricane approaches, all employees are urgently evacuated to the mainland. Erminger Sea It occupies an area of about 780,000 square kilometers. This sea is known for its powerful storms. In the northern parts of the sea, cold and warm currents intersect, which is why the windiest strip of salt water is here. The Erminger Sea is rightfully considered one of the most stormy places on our planet. Oceanologists study this place very carefully because of the power currents and the strongest hurricanes. Also, scientists are attracted by the complex topography of the seafloor, an unusual phenomenon called the waterfall at the bottom of the Denmark Strait, which is 4,000 meters high, especially attracted their attention. In terms of its power, this underwater waterfall exceeds Niagara Falls. Dead Sea The Dead Sea washes the shores of Israel, Palestine, and Jordan. It is located 430 meters below the world ocean level. The indicators of mineral salts here are almost nine times higher than in the Mediterranean Sea, 350 grams per liter of water. That is why there are no living creatures in the Dead Sea. This sea is ideal for recovery, but it's not that simple. You can get burns while staying for over 20 minutes in the water. Also, in no case you should not swallow water from the Dead Sea. You risk getting poisoning and problems with your urinary system and cardiovascular organs. Another serious problem is the sudden occurrence of sinkholes in the coastal zone, which are impossible to predict or guess. South China Sea The South China Sea is a huge reservoir with an area of over 3,500 square meters. It is located between Indonesia, the Philippines, Brunei, and Indochina. This sea poses a threat in the form of jellyfish, which are called sea wasps. These creatures are almost invisible in the water, but their tentacles are full of the strongest poison of neurotoxin. In winter, reverse currents perpendicular to the shore are raging in this sea. These currents are so strong that even an experienced swimmer can't handle them. There are often hurricanes, which cause huge waves up to 4 meters high. In 2017, the typhoon Damri dealt a serious blow. The wind speed reached up to over 110 km per hour, especially affecting the roofs of buildings, which were blown into small pieces. Black Sea The Black Sea is the youngest sea on Earth. Its age is 8,000 years. Every year, thousands of tourists from different parts of the world come to the Black Sea coast who have no idea how dangerous it is. Already starting from a depth of 200 meters, there is a layer of hydrogen sulfide, which is very toxic. That is why only some bacteria can exist at greater depths. All sea creatures live in the upper layers of the Black Sea, and almost 90% of the sea is lifeless. The Black Sea is quite calm, but has two powerful circular currents, which are called Knipovich spectacles. The Black Sea has an unusual structure. It has several different layers that never mix. It's in the upper layer, which is rich in oxygen, and is where almost all living creatures live. Its height is approximately 50 meters. Since the Black Sea is almost isolated from the world ocean, the level of hydrogen sulfide is very high here. When a violent storm begins, hydrogen sulfide vapors can rise to the surface. This is very dangerous because when in contact with the air, hydrogen sulfide can cause a powerful explosion. 
If such an explosion occurs, it will be equivalent to the fall of an asteroid weighing about half of the moon. The Black Sea region is distinguished by increased seismic activity. A powerful earthquake can trigger the release of huge amounts of toxic substances, which in turn will cause acid rains. Thousands of people will die in such a catastrophe, and the rest will have to move far away from the sea. At the famous resort Kobluva, once there was a poisonous gas emission. At that time, more than 100 tons of fish died. Maximum hydrogen sulfide is at a depth of 200 meters. There, its level is almost 10 milligrams per liter of water. According to a rough estimate revealed by scientists, the amount of hydrogen sulfide in the Black Sea is more than 3 billion tons. This is much more than in any other sea on our planet. Other studies have shown that the Black Sea also contains a huge amount of methane. This gas comes to the surface quite rarely, but cases of poisoning of sea creatures have been recorded. In 1927, after the Crimean earthquake, the gas cloud burst to the surface. The witnesses of this phenomenon sensed the strong smell of hydrogen sulfide and saw a huge flame over the sea. During the earthquake, there was also a thunderstorm. That's what caused the fire. Where does the huge amount of hydrogen sulfide come from in the Black Sea? Some scientists claim that hydrogen sulfide is released from the Earth's crust faults at the bottom of the Black Sea. Other scientists believe that hydrogen sulfide in large quantities is formed because of rotting at the bottom of the organic remains. Since the water circulation here is quite bad, it accumulates there. Scientists believe the organic matter of the Dnieper, Danube, and other tributaries of the Black Sea can also cause that damage. Another version of a high concentration of hydrogen sulfide is the presence of anaerobic sulfate-reducing bacteria. To date, experts who are studying this problem are very concerned because the cases of gas emissions to the surface have become more frequent. Such phenomena can be dangerous for the inhabitants of the Black Sea as well as for the inhabitants of the entire Black Sea coast. An interesting solution to this problem was the use of hydrogen sulfide as a source of electricity, but apparently they haven't figured out how to do this yet. Have fun wisely. Don't swim far, but better to swim along the coast. Any reservoir can be dangerous. Don't forget about it. Most Dangerous Sports Oh, sport, you are the world. All of us are familiar with sports in one way or another. Some are fans of it and some are not. Some can't live without it, while others can't live with it. There are tens of thousands of different sports and millions of athletes in the world, but not all sports are safe. Every year, on average, 10 to 75% of athletes die during training and competitions. There are deaths in any sport, but the more extreme the sport, the higher the death rate. According to statistics, the safest sports are swimming, rowing, fencing, diving, and Nordic walking. But there are also very dangerous sports that take many lives. But despite this fact, some extreme lovers are not stopped by anything in the way. The 10 Most Extreme and Dangerous Sports 10. Rock Climbing and Mountaineering Rock climbing is a highly dangerous sport and no one doubts it. But according to statistics, only one out of 1,750 athletes fail each year. Here, the athlete's strength must be distributed just perfectly. The difficulty lies not only in the ascent, but also in the descent. Most beginners make the main mistake by putting all their energy into the ascent and forgetting that the descent is just as hard. The specific point about mountaineering is that with any serious injury, you are more likely to come close to death or at best, a hospital bed. Mountaineering qualifies as a level 5 hazard sport. 9. Motor Sports The death rate in motorcycling is not as high as it could be, thanks to professional equipment to ensure the safety of athletes on the track. Fractures, injuries, and bruises are not that dangerous. The real threat to the athlete's health comes from the extreme stresses that the body experiences during races. Crazy centrifugal force, constant stress of mind and body of motorcycle racers literally destroy the body. Muscles, bones, and internal organs are gradually getting damaged. 
During the race, the athlete loses an average of about 4 to 5 kilograms because of the protective suit and stress. The same happens with Formula One racers. After a couple of years of professional racing, the racer's body just needs an overhaul. 8. Rodeo This sport remotely resembles horseback riding, but only very remotely. On average, in 8 seconds when an athlete is on the bull, he is already guaranteed a dislocation of the wrist. If he falls from the bull, which is almost always the case, his chances of being crushed by the bull increase dramatically, as well as the chance of getting a dangerous or even fatal injury by the horns. Each year, there are about 80,000 people who become victims of bulls during rodeos. This is considering the fact this sport is far from being popular all over the world. It's good that we have almost none of it. But in some European countries, it's starting to gain momentum. So, if you are interested in rodeo, it's better to be just a spectator. 7. Parachuting Parachuting is an extreme discipline, which of course is associated with increased risk to the health and life of the athletes. Before making your jump, you will definitely be asked to sign documents on the voluntary nature of the jump and the absence of claims against the organizers. On average, the death rate in the sport of parachuting is 13 people per year. The fatality rate is 0.03% and injuries are about 0.1%. The chance of dying while parachuting is 233 less than dying from fire. Accidents usually happen due to the parachutist's fault and his or her incorrect actions. So, about 30% of accidents happen because of a bad landing, about 25% happens when the skydiver didn't try to open the reserve parachute, and about 20% happens because of opening the reserve parachute at low altitude. The remaining 20% of accidents were caused by incorrect operation or absence of a safety device or due to the loss of consciousness of the parachutist or other factors out of control of the parachutist. Fatal accidents mostly happen to people who are not new to the sport, and they happen because of overconfidence, indiscipline, carelessness and making the wrong decision. To protect yourself, do not skimp on the jump. A jump will be as cheap as possible were they under budget money on the airplane fuel, instructor, or equipment. 6. Rafting Rafting is an extreme sport, which is why safety is paramount here. Without a life jacket and helmet, you cannot get on a raft. Choose equipment strictly according to your size. Do not wear a vest and helmet of a larger size. Rafting is paddling down rivers on a special boat called a raft. It has good water stability and high buoyancy. The main danger of this sport is that there is a huge risk of falling out of the floating craft. Especially for this purpose, there is a rope around the perimeter of the raft, which should be firmly held in case of impact. To avoid an accident, it is necessary to choose professionals. Find out as much information as possible about the organizing company, about the experience of the instructors, and whether they have supporting certificates and work permits in general. 5. Rugby these athletes have a very high chance of ending up in a hospital bed. During the game, athletes are constantly pushing each other. Lacking sufficient protective equipment, rugby players constantly get stretches, breaks, muscle injuries and fractures. On average, each player suffers about two to three minor injuries per game. Meanwhile, more serious injuries are guaranteed for more than a quarter of athletes after every match. So, if you want to become a regular customer in hospitals, rugby is just for you. Otherwise, watch the game on TV. It's safer that way. 4. Surfing Quite a dangerous and extreme sport. Here, the risk of drowning is very high. The main reason for drowning is the loss of consciousness. That's why you go to conquer the waves with your friends. But this is not only the main danger of surfing. Marine life, especially sharks, is a huge danger to the surfer. But besides sharks, athletes should be wary of seals, snakes, jellyfish, and stingrays. Some waves that look great from the shore can easily break bones. Local surfers may not be the best company, so always behave in a friendly manner. Underwater currents can wash you into the ocean in one second. Surfboards, straps, sea bottoms, and a large number of surfer beginners, all of these can be detrimental to you. It's worth weighing all the pros and cons before setting off to conquer the waves. 3. Horse Riding As long as you are firmly in the saddle,
There is no reason to panic. But if you fall, then, unfortunately, fractures of the arms and legs, pelvis, spine, or shoulder joints are guaranteed. This is a better option than a horse that weighs about 1,700 pounds will walk over your body. According to statistics, while riding, people receive 40,000 injuries per year, including fatal ones. Here, the relationship between the jockey and his horse must be just perfect. Otherwise, one should hope only for luck. 2. Diving It's a quite dangerous sport, requiring a person maximum training and self-discipline. Each year, more than 8,000 people are becoming disabled. Diving can cause potential damage to the brain, lungs, and heart, and often results in death. Being in an underwater cave at a depth of more than 100 meters in the dark, a person experiences tremendous stress, and any malfunction with equipment, diver mistakes, or encounters with underwater creatures can be fatal. There is no shortage of dangers associated with scuba diving. The use of scuba gear is fraught with danger. By diving into the depths and inhaling nitrogen under great pressure, a person can become insane and commit suicide. The reason for this is the disruption of the brain centers. By ascending to the surface very quickly, you can get bends. That's why the diver must be descended to a sufficient depth for decompression. At a depth of up to 30 meters, a diver can get a ruptured eardrum, damage to blood vessels, hypothermia, or hemorrhages in internal organs. 1. Base Jumping The most dangerous activity on our list is base jumping. It's a parachute jump from an object. Such jumps are made from low structures such as bridges, cliffs, waterfalls, or any other structures. Such jumps are very dangerous because any failure to follow the rules will lead to the death of the athlete. To start learning base jumping, a person must be over 18 years old and have extensive experience of parachute jumping that is over 150 jumps registered in the book of the parachutist. There are such types of base jumping in the world as free fall. This is the most popular type of jump where the athlete opens the parachute himself. Makanki. Performing such a jump, the parachute canopy hangs in front of the athlete. Makanki can only be practiced in calm weather so as not to get entangled in the canopy. Pilot shoot assist. During such a jump, the parachute is in the hand of an assistant who is standing on the object from which the jump will be performed. Wingsuit. The athlete wears a special suit which gives him the shape of a wing. Group jumps. Such jumps look quite spectacular, but they increase the level of danger. These jumps should be performed only by very experienced athletes. Acrobatics. During a free fall, the athlete performs acrobatic stunts. Wrong way. The bag with the parachute is on the base jumper's chest, and he jumps with his back to the front. The first base jump was made by a Russian student Vladimir Osovsky. He made a jump in France from a bridge 60 meters high over the Seine. When making jumps, close attention should be paid to the object from which the athlete will jump. A very common cause of death in base jumping is a collision with the object. Before each such jump, it is necessary to make a calculation, study the direction and strength of the wind, and carefully study the landing areas. From 1981 to 2017, there were 312 base jumping deaths. In 2015, one of the best athletes, Dean Potter and his partner, died while jumping over 2,000 meters in a park in the United States. As you can see, any sport can be dangerous, but especially extreme sports. That's why you should think a thousand times before starting to play one of the sports in our top 10. But if you have decided, then you should unconditionally follow all safety measures and rules to protect yourself from sudden death. Parasites. During life, a person encounters them at least once. These can be commonplace fleas and pets or more unpleasant guests from the owner themselves. But God forbids anyone to meet with one of the representatives on our list today. These terrible and malicious creatures are capable of undermining health and even ruining the life of anyone who, through carelessness or due to a fatal set of circumstances, meets them on their way. Loa Loa or African Eye Worm The African Eye Worm is the causative agent of the dreaded disease Loa Loa filariasis. 
Skin rashes, itching, and fever are only the first symptoms of this progressive disease. This is caused by worms that travel under the skin of the eyelid and into the patient's blood. However, the course of the disease can remain asymptomatic for a while. It's until the helminth begins to cross the bridge of the nose or penetrate under the conjunctiva, thereby causing terrible pain. From the larvae that have entered the bite side by a special kind of carrier fly, adult worms 2 to 7 cm long slowly develop. Dense, painful swelling of various parts of the body. And if the eyes are injured, swelling of the eyelids can occur. The formation of abscesses around the dead adult helminths is also clearly pronounced. All this is fraught with the fact that when the parasites move, nerve endings are irritated and the metabolic products of the parasite poison the human body and cause allergies. There can be only one prevention of infection, is to protect against the bites of horseflies, which are carriers of the disease. Guinea worm or Dracunculus medinensis Guinea worm is a parasitic roundworm that causes the disease of the same name in humans, guinea worm disease, or in other words, dracunculiasis. Dracunculiasis is a crippling parasitic disease that is on the verge of elimination. People become infected by drinking water containing contaminated microcrustaceans. The larvae emerge from them, penetrate the human intestinal wall, and develop in the abdominal cavity, turning into adult worms in about one year. About a year after infection, an excruciatingly painful blister forms, and in 90% of cases, it is localized on the shin. Then, one or more worms are released outward, causing a burning sensation. To relieve the burning pain, patients often immerse the parasite-affected body part in water. At the same time, the worm releases thousands of larvae into the water. Prevention is nevertheless possible, and it's thanks to it that the disease is on the verge of elimination. Filarial worms Lymphatic filariasis is caused by infection with parasites belonging to the roundworm family Filariodia. It leads to abnormalities in the lymphatic system. Moreover, it can cause abnormal hypertrophy of certain body parts, causing pain and leading to severe disability and social stigmatization. Adult worms live in the lymphatic vessels and disrupt the normal functioning of the lymphatic system. Their lifespan is about 6 to 8 years, and during this time they produce millions of microfilari that circulate in the blood. Infection occurs as a result of the transmission of the parasites to humans through a mosquito bite. Lymphatic filariasis can be eliminated by stopping the spread of infection with annual courses of preventive chemotherapy. Ophiocordyceps unilateralis fungus However, humans are not the only ones who suffer from parasites on our planet. Many parasites skillfully manipulate host behavior to increase their chances of survival and reproduction. For example, some species of Cordyceps fungi cause infected ants to leave the colony, climb up a plant and hang onto it, holding on with their jaws. After the insect dies, the fruiting body of the fungus sprouts from it. Essentially, Cordyceps turns the host into a vehicle to travel to a place that is perfect in terms of maturing and spreading spores. Scientists have demonstrated that the fungus attacks several important functions of the host's nervous system at once. For example, it knocks down the ant's daily routine by disrupting genes associated with circadian rhythms. Even more destructive, the parasite affects the victim's sense of smell, the main channel of its communication with congeners. As a result, the infected individual loses contact with the colony, moves far away from it, and does not return in time. An addition effect is the interference of cordyceps in the transmission of the neurotransmitters. As a result, the poor ant dies and the fungus continues its lineage. Moose tick The winter or moose tick is a tick that mainly attacks moose. It differs from other ticks in its impressive size, up to 15 mm, which reaches its peak at the end of winter. In years when the infestation is significant, thousands of ticks can attack a single moose, causing problems for severely affected animals. The animal begins to overgroom itself to try to stop the severe itching. Some stop being afraid of people and may seem lost or confused. They may also stop eating and start going outside of their natural habitat. 
weight loss and poor physical condition, fur loss and wounds and blood loss combined with harsh weather conditions can affect moose health. It makes them more vulnerable to predators, poaching and road accidents. In some cases, severely affected animals can die. Young moose are especially vulnerable. The winter tick can attack other species of ungulates, but it's the moose that suffers the most. It's not dangerous to humans. The highest number of winter ticks ever found on moose was about a hundred thousand. However, this moose cub was already dead, most likely a victim of anemia, which develops when so many ticks deplete moose blood. Here is Leucochloridium paradoxum, another representative of flatworms. The final hosts of this parasite are birds. Eggs with bird droppings reach the external environment, where they are eaten by a snail. In its digestive tract, the parasite develops to the stage of sporocysts, which is an oblong sac filled with cercari. Such sporocysts migrate to the snail's tentacles, turning them into caterpillar-like shapes to attract birds by their bright coloration and pulsation. The leucochloridium causes the snail to move to more lit areas and become more visible. Eventually, the bird eats the snail and the parasite enters the final host. After a bird feasts on a part of the snail, the parasite is home again in the body of its main host. Then, a snail's severed tentacles grow back. However, a holy place is never empty. After a while, new sporocysts penetrate there. This is how the poor snail will have to suffer for the rest of its life. Glyptopantalus parasitic wasps some species of parasitic wasps of the species Glyptopentalis, also called Ichneumon wasps, lay their eggs in the bodies of other insects, such as caterpillars. The parasitic wasp injects about 80 eggs into a host at a time, along with a poly-DNA virus and a small amount of venom that paralyzes the caterpillar until the wasp makes a clutch. The virus helps suppress its host's immune system, so that the host fully adjusts to the larval rearing function and does not turn into a pupa. The hatching larvae grow and develop inside the unfortunate victim, feeding on its lymph without damaging its internal organs. After that, they leave the caterpillar's body, attach themselves nearby to a leaf and pupate. But two or three larvae remain inside to control the caterpillar. Under this control, instead of continuing its development, it stays in place and selflessly protects alien larvae from other insects. When the Yonic Newman wasps emerge, they die. Cymothua exigua, or the tongue-eating louse. Here's a unique parasite that not only eats the body parts of its host, but completely replaces what it has eaten. The tongue-eating louse penetrates through the gills and establishes itself in the body of a fish. The spotted rose snapper. It eats the tongue of its victim and then begins to feed on the mucus and, however, it works diligently instead of the tongue. Female specimens reach a length of up to 3 cm, males up to 1.5 cm. The lice multiply right in the mouth of the fish. Periodically, a sexually mature male swims into the fish's mouth through the gills and mates with the female living there. Another surprising thing is that while the tongue-eating louse is growing, it is a male. Once it penetrates the snapper's oral cavity, it transforms into a female. Sometimes, the tongue-eating louse can settle in the mouth of large fish in pairs. The victim uses them as its tongue, unaware of the replacement. Kandaroo or a vampire fish both parents and officials always remind us that pissing in rivers or lakes or pools is not allowed. Now, for sure, no one will do that after reading about the kangaroo. It's a very little fish that lives in the Amazon and penetrates the bladder during urination. It feeds on blood and flesh in the body, causing severe pain. Indians consider this fish more dangerous than the piranha. When swimming in rivers, the fish can easily penetrate a person's genitourinary organs, resulting in terrible pain and ultimately death. The vampire fish is the only vertebrate that lives a parasitic life on humans. Hello everyone! Every person on the planet is so unique and unusual that you won't find two people in the entire world who are the same. 
Even twins who resemble each other like two peas in a pod have different fingerprints. However, some people are very different from others. Sometimes it's their conscious choice, and sometimes a person is born with some genetic mutation that can't help but affect their appearance. Today we will tell you about the rarest genetic mutations. Progeria or Hutchinson-Gilford syndrome This is a rare genetic mutation that affects one person out of every 5 to 8,000. A child's body begins to age very early usually. From the age of 2, there are already changes such as severe growth retardation and very late appearance of teeth, poorly functioning joints, children are going bald, pronounced flabbiness of the skin, the upper part of the skull becomes larger, the nose takes on a characteristic shape. On average, children with this disease live for about 13 years. In medicine, only one case is known when a Japanese with progeria lived for 45 years. Usually, the death of such people occurs due to strokes and heart attacks. Today, the disease is incurable, but it's possible to extend and improve the quality of life of such children. The main cause of this disease is a mutation in the gene responsible for the formation of the lamin substance. It is the lamin that's involved in the formation of the cell membrane. Girls suffer from this disease twice as rarely as boys. There are about 80 children worldwide with this mutation. Hopefully, scientists will soon be able to invent a cure for progeria in children. Honor Tan Syndrome A characteristic feature of this disorder is the inability to walk on two legs. People suffering from this syndrome only walk on all fours. The disease is named after a biologist who discovered it by studying an unusual family in Turkey. Usually, people with the condition are born with a brain deficiency. In 2006, a movie was made about the Olas family walking on all fours. According to the scientists, the syndrome is a reverse step in evolution caused by a genetic mutation. Interestingly, all cases of honor tan syndrome have been found in Turkey. Hypertrichosis this rare condition is also called werewolf syndrome. A werewolf person is born one in a billion. People with this condition have an excessive amount of hair on their face, ears, shoulders, and entire body. During fetal formation, the connections between the dermis and epidermis are disrupted, resulting in hypertrichosis. wiedemann rauten strauch syndrome there are not many people with this rare disease in the world. The main signs are premature aging and the inability to gain weight, even if you constantly eat. As a rule, the percentage of fat in such people is zero. But the most interesting thing is that all internal organs, bones and teeth are healthy. A well-known representative of this syndrome is blogger Lizzie Velasquez. Cystic Hygroma Another blogger with a very unusual appearance is Marimar Kiroa. This girl was born with a huge tumor on her face that prevents her from speaking. Marimar breathes through a hole in her neck, her right ear is almost inaudible, and she eats through a hole in her stomach. With all this, the girl was able to find the strength to create her own YouTube channel, where she shoots videos about makeup. Previously, Marimar hid her face from the people around her and tried not to appear among people. For this girl, inner beauty is much more important than outer beauty. Marimar lives a full life, studying to be a teacher of the deaf, going to a beauty school and even becoming a Zumba teacher. Polycephaly How would we live if we had to share our bodies with someone else? I don't even want to think about it, but some people live with two heads. Polycephaly is a rare case of Siamese twins, about 1 in 200,000. Usually it's two people with one shared torso, each of whom can control their own half of the body. It is very rare for one head to be parasitic. But unfortunately, successfully separating twins does not work. It's almost always fatal. Sirenomelia this disease is also called mermaid syndrome because of the congenital anomalies of the lower limbs, which resemble a mermaid's tail. Science knows of 300 such cases. A large percentage are born with sirenomelia among twins, one of whom has the disease. Also, the syndrome affects children whose mothers have diabetes. 
Boys are affected more often, and the chance of having such a child is 1 in 80 to 100,000. Such children suffer from spinal problems, stomach problems, and lung underdevelopment is particularly common. Proteus syndrome A rare condition that affects one person in a million. This syndrome affects internal organs, skin, and bones. Such people are prone to thrombosis, benign tumors, and often the body becomes asymmetrical. It happens that sick people are mentally impaired. More often, people are affected in the legs and patients have strabismus. Proteus syndrome is a hereditary disease that occurs very early in the development of the fetus. Analgesia or congenital insensitivity to pain. This mutation is more common in young children who successfully outgrow it. However, there are cases when this disease passes into adulthood. It may seem that you would be glad that you don't feel pain, but in reality it's very dangerous. A person can get burned, break bones, may even develop sepsis and not feel anything. Such patients have absolutely no idea about their state of health, because nothing bothers them. There are 20 known cases of analgesia worldwide. It was an interesting episode where a woman with this condition could feel pain after giving birth to a child. Epiderma dysplasia verusiformis this particularly rare disease makes a person prone to the human papillomavirus. It causes papules to form on the skin of the patient. Such growths on the body make a person look like a tree. They form, as a rule, on areas of the skin that are often exposed to the sun. It's not yet possible to completely cure this disease, but it's possible to slow down or even slightly suspend the formation of new papules. The world learned about this disease when people watched a video of a man from Indonesia who was covered with papules. He underwent numerous surgeries to remove the growths, but unfortunately, after a while, they began to appear again. Argyria This quite rare mutation is also known as blue skin syndrome. This abnormality is caused by an excess of silver in the human body. Many people have seen a picture of Paul Carrison, whose skin has turned a gray-blue color, like Smurfs. This happened because a Californian often consumed a balm of water and colloidal silver. Paul Carrison died of a heart attack. There is another known case where a man's skin turned gray-blue, and his hair became lighter because of runny nose drops containing silver. Actrodactyly in this condition, a person's hands or feet look like pincers because of underdeveloped or missing fingers. Often such people are deaf. This mutation is caused by a malfunction in the seventh chromosome. It happens that the patient's fingers grow together. In such cases, doctors manage to separate them. After the release of the movie The Witches with Anne Hathaway, many people with this syndrome were outraged. The audience was outraged by the image of the main witch, whose hands looked exactly like those of actrodactyly patients. Afterward, Anne Hathaway apologized to the audience and said she was sorry she didn't know that before. Trimethylaminuria This disease is one of the rarest in the world. There is not even any data on the number of people with this disease. In such patients, trimethylamine, a substance with a very unpleasant odor, like rotten eggs and fish, accumulates in the body. When a person sweats, trimethylamine is released from the body and it is impossible to be near the person. Such people naturally avoid public places and often suffer from depression. Xeroderma pigmentosum Xeroderma pigmentosum is considered a hereditary disease. People with this mutation are very sensitive to the sun. Symptoms of the disease often appear in early childhood. Being in the sun, the child has severe burns on the body, dry skin, and freckles all over the body. Such people are most susceptible to the development of skin cancer. Scientists know of eight types of this disease today. Statistically, four out of a million people suffer from xeroderma pigmentosum. Polythelia Polythelia is a rare genetic disorder that causes one person in 18 to have one or more extra nipples on the body. They look like small birthmarks or spots. Polythelia is an atavism, as additional nipples must disappear even before birth.
But it happens that a person is born with even six or eight nipples. There are about 200,000 such people in the United States. Among famous actors, Mark Wahlberg, Tilda Swinton, and Lily Allen suffer from polythelia. There are many people born into the world who are unlike the rest. Genetic mutations are to blame for that. Today, society must finally become kinder and more tolerant of other people who suffer because of their disease. Which genetic mutation impressed you the most? Write in the comments and subscribe to the channel. Friends, we welcome you to the Other Mind channel. Today, let's talk about river monsters. Do you often think about what monsters may live in rivers and whether it's dangerous to swim in them? In this regard, our rivers are much safer than, for example, in Africa, Australia or America. We've prepared for you 20 of the scariest river dwellers on the planet. Let's go! Flathead Catfish Meet one of the most dangerous river dwellers in North America. The flathead catfish can be up to one and a half meters long and weigh over 100 kilograms. The catfish's diet consists of waterfowl, other fish, and mammals. But there are also cases of attacks on people. For example, up to 10 fishermen per year are killed in North American rivers. Attacking its prey, the flathead catfish tears it to pieces with its powerful jaws. Vandalia serosa or kangaroo. This small fish at first glance does not raise any concerns, but it's only so it appears. You will be shocked to learn that it feeds on blood and urine, penetrating the anus and genital urinary organs. Then the Vandalia serosa begins to devour the flesh. You can't remove this parasite on your own, you'll need surgery. One good thing is that this fish lives far away from us in the Amazon River in Colombia, Brazil, Peru and Ecuador. Piranha the piranha is a relatively small predator, growing up to 30 centimeters in length, but terrifying to people. Piranhas live in Brazil and South America. Having a large number of teeth and being always in search of prey, piranhas pose a tremendous danger to anyone who meets them on the way. Piranhas hunt in large packs. They swallow small fish and start tearing off pieces of meat from larger ones. In a matter of minutes, a pack of piranhas can leave only the bones of their prey. Electric Eel Lacking a powerful jaw and huge teeth, this fish poses an enormous danger to people. It does not need teeth to do this. It will, at lightning speed, generate a powerful discharge of electricity which can cause a person to lose consciousness. Do not approach the eel closer than 3 meters, because this is the range of its current. In addition, the electric eel is quite aggressive and often attacks for no reason. You can meet this fish up to 3 meters long and weighing up to 40 kilograms in the Amazon River and other rivers in the northeast of South America. Begarius urali or Gunj catfish. This catfish can be found in the Kali River area between India and Nepal, as well as in the Brahmaputra, Indus and Ganges river basins. Since ancient times the bodies of the dead have been dumped into this river. Often bodies do not burn completely and catfish feed on human remains. These huge predators weigh up to 140 kilograms and often attack people in search of food. Tambaki it's an amazing fish with teeth that are very similar to human teeth but much sharper. That's why the tambaki easily gnaws fruits and nuts that fall into the river from the trees. It lives in the Amazon River and also eats invertebrates and fish. In the 90s, tambaki attacked two fishermen who died from blood loss. It grows to an average of about 70 to 100 centimeters and weighs about 40 kilograms. The tambaki looks a bit like piranhas, only larger in size. Hydrocinus goliath, or giant tiger fish. This dangerous aquatic dweller can be found in Africa in the Congo River. But it's better not to meet with it, because this fish is quite a dangerous predator and it's like a real tiger while attacking other fish and even people. I don't want anyone to face a 50 kilogram monster that grows up to 180 centimeters in length. To easily cope with prey, the giant tiger fish has 32 sharp teeth. You can learn more about the giant tiger fish in our separate video, a link is in the description. Black Cayman 
This giant monster with lightning-fast reaction and great strength grows up to 6 meters long. It's better not to get in its way, the caiman would tear anyone to shreds. The black caiman is one of the largest crocodiles and is the largest predator in the Amazon River. The black caiman is an omnivore. Its diet is dominated by fish, vegetation, crustaceans, and insects. Adults hunt for the larger prey. The caiman hunts mammals, snakes, waterfowl, and fish. Black caimans have repeatedly attacked people. Giant Freshwater Stingray or Short-Tailed River Stingray They live in the rivers of Thailand, Indonesia, Malaysia, Australia, and New Guinea. These giants weigh about 500 kg and are up to 2 meters in diameter. This stingray is quite dangerous because it has two sharp spikes on the tail. The large spike helps to hold the victim down. Such a spike looks like a harpoon and it's difficult to pull out because of the large number of serrations on it. The stingray can easily pierce the bottom of a boat with a spike which grows to almost 40 centimeters. A stingray will never attack a person first. For that, you either have to accidentally disturb it or try to catch it. The second spike is smaller, but its purpose is to inject venom that can kill a person. Freshwater stingrays are viviparous, with a female giving birth to a single calf up to 35 centimeters in length. The number of giant freshwater stingrays is decreasing, so it's forbidden to hunt them. After the photo shoot and measurements, the stingrays are returned to the river. Anaconda for people who are afraid of snakes, the anaconda will be a real challenge. This monster reaches a length of up to 5 to 6 meters and weighs about 50 to 70 kilograms. If the anaconda begins to coil itself around its victim, it can no longer escape. It lives in the Amazon River and likes to rest in shallow water. Anaconda is the largest snake on the planet and is not poisonous. Giant Otter Inhabiting the Amazon rivers, otters are quite large, up to 2 meters in length. An individual otter on its own is not so dangerous, but when they gather in packs, these animals can kill even large caimans and anacondas. Arapaima It's a giant monster with teeth even on its tongue. Even piranhas are no threat to them because they have armored scales. Arapaima grows up to 3 meters and weighs about 90 kilograms. It feeds on fish and waterfowl. There have been recorded cases of this giant attacking humans as well. Bull Sharks these sharks usually live in the ocean, but they're also excellent in rivers. It's not uncommon for them to swim very far down the Amazon, where they look for their prey. They grow up to 3 meters and the strength of their bite reaches 600 kilograms. It's better never to encounter this predator, because afterward the chances of survival are close to zero. Hydraulicus scamboroidus It's a true vampire among river dwellers. This fish has huge fangs up to 15 centimeters, which do not give the victim a chance. It lives in the Amazon, grows up to 117 centimeters, and weighs about 18 kilograms. It feeds on piranhas and other fish. This fish is very often the object of sport fishing due to its powerful resistance when trying to pull it out of the river. The locals also go fishing for the Hydraulicus scomboroidus, considering its meat very delicious. Protopterus. They live in the water bodies of Africa and belong to the lungfish species. When a body of water dries up, the Protopterus burrows into the ground and hibernates. It usually happens every year and such hibernation lasts several months. But the main feature of Protopterus is that they can stay in such a state for up to four years. The largest of the Protopterus species is the marbled longfish. It reaches up to 2 meters in length and weighs about 17 kilograms. They are nocturnal, can move with the help of fins on the bottom, and can swim in the water like eels. They feed on crabs, crayfish, mollusks, and fish. The local population often catches Protopterus and eat them. Nile Perch 
This perch is striking in its size. The largest specimens grow up to 2 meters in length and weigh up to 200 kilograms. The ancient Egyptians called this fish the Princess of the Nile. They can live in any freshwater body of water, preferring warm waters. The Nile perch is a true predator. It's not uncommon for this monster to choose its prey among its own species. It's the largest predatory fish of Lake Victoria. This giant has been artificially introduced into other bodies of water, which has had a negative impact. The perch is a real glutton, so the number of local fish species has significantly decreased. A very unusual fact is that the Nile perch hatches its young in its mouth, protecting its next generation. Nile Crocodile This crocodile inhabits the territory of the African continent. It's considered one of the deadliest creatures on the planet. Males can grow up to 5 meters, even one such monster is very dangerous. When they hunt in a pack, the victim has no chance of survival. They can attack even rhinos and hippos. Quite often, people become victims of this crocodile. Every year, from several hundred to a couple of thousand people die from its teeth. Northern Snakehead These fish are quite rare in the West, but there was a case when a fisherman found the northern snakehead in a pond in the United States. Many scientists believe that snakeheads can take root in North America, thereby seriously damaging the local ecosystem. These predatory fish grow up to a meter in length and are very voracious. Their diet consists of frogs, fish, and invertebrates. Northern snakeheads can live outside of the water for up to four days. Sawfish The small-toothed sawfish lives in freshwater. Sometimes it even swims into lakes. It chooses muddy and shallow water, spending most of its time on the bottom. It is similar to saw rays, not sharks, as it might seem at first glance. They are distinguished by the long, flat rostrum, laterally dotted with tooth-like outgrowths. It doesn't attack people on purpose, but due to poor eyesight, this fish can accidentally inflict quite dangerous saw blows. Today, these fish are protected because of the decline in their numbers. Leech this little parasite feeds on blood and is usually not very dangerous. On average, a leech feeds for half an hour and then detaches itself. However, bleeding after such a sting can last for several days, especially if you have several leeches hooked on you. A leech can transmit infections and parasites to humans because it has no immune system. In Africa, even the hepatitis B virus and HIV have been found in wild leeches. Some of the leeches can enter the nose, eyes, ears, bladder, and even the stomach. That was our top 20 scariest river dwellers. Share in the comments which animal surprised you the most. Give us a like if the video was useful and subscribe to the channel. We still have a lot of interesting things. See you next time! Friends, hello everyone! At all times, in all countries, crimes have been committed. That's why people decided to build special institutions for dangerous criminals. Today, there are millions of prisons in different countries, which are very different from each other. In some European and American prisons, you can feel like you're on vacation. There, the prisoners have separate rooms with a door and a window, not a grid with a concrete floor. They engage in sports, creative work, and acquire new professions and knowledge. Other prisons are so dangerous that even the most terrible criminals have an unbearable life there. Now we're going to talk about these particular prisons. Meet the top 10 worst prisons in the world. Let's go! Australia, Melbourne Prison This building for prisoners was built back in 1839. The original plan was to make it a prison with steam heating, a special control system, and ventilation. But all these ideas remained ideas, as the prisoners were confined in dungeons without heating or windows. In 1852, a separate block was built for women. Until then, all prisoners lived in the same building. Women criminals were sent here for especially grave crimes of that time. These were illegal abortions that led to the deaths of many women and the illegal activities of nannies, to whom parents gave their children temporarily and left to earn a living. Children in such conditions often died. Thus, in 1863, one such nanny was executed for the deaths of three small children. The execution of Frances Knorr was the first case in Victoria in which a woman was executed. A total of 139 people were executed in this prison. 
Some of the prisoners committed suicide before being executed. For example, in 1866, one prisoner committed suicide whose ghost the warders could watch at night. Today, a museum has been made from this prison, where visitors can see the nail marks of the prisoners on the walls of the cells. In the early 2000s, British scientists decided to check the rumors about the ghost of this prison. In their investigation, they used special instruments, which showed maximum electromagnetic changes just on the day of the suicide of that very prisoner. Scientists even recorded on a microphone when the voice of a woman was heard. Russia – Black Dolphin Prison Black Dolphin is a penal colony for the most dangerous criminals in Russia. Maniacs, cannibals and terrorists spend their last days here. Prisoners here are under video surveillance around the clock and sleep under lights. When the criminal leaves the cell, the convoy and a dog handler with a dog are sure to accompany them. Prisoners are always blindfolded outside their cells and have their hands cuffed behind their backs. Even when they are walking around, the prisoners' hands are still restrained. It is thanks to such methods that no one has yet been able to escape from this prison. The cells in this colony are no larger than 5 square meters. The prisoners can't go near the windows or doors because they are separated by steel bars. As it turns out, it is the semblance of a cage in a cage. The prison got its name of Black Dolphin because of the sculpture in front of the colony, which is a fountain. The sculpture was made by prisoners on their own initiative and painted black. Thailand Bang Quang Central Prison The prison located in Bangkok is known as the Big Tiger among the locals. It houses prisoners who have received life sentences or are on death row. Torture is often practiced in this prison and criminals are held in tiny cells with 20 to 25 people in one cell. The prisoners walk with iron shackles on their feet. Prisoners are fed only once a day. The rest of the food can be bought, if relatives donate money. Naturally, in such unsanitary conditions in overcrowded cells, prisoners often suffer from malaria, diphtheria, cholera, and other diseases. No one gets proper medical care here. Venezuela – Maracaibo National Prison – Sabaneta Prison it's hard to imagine a building designed for 700 prisoners actually holding about 4,000 criminals. There is only one warden for every 150 prisoners. This prison is completely unsanitary. There are buckets of water instead of showers, garbage bags instead of toilets, and the drinking water is full of infection and bacteria. The death of a prisoner is commonplace here. Criminals sleep in hammocks in cells, corridors, and even on the roof of the prison. Only the leaders of criminal gangs, those who have money, get a separate cell and medical care. Colombia – La Modelo It's an awful facility in Colombia where all people are divided into right-wing and left-wing political views. There is constant fighting between the prisoners who can easily get any type of weapon in prison. Deaths of prisoners at La Modelo are quite common. In the spring of 2000, for example, 25 prisoners died here at once. Rwanda – Muhanga Prison It's hard to believe, but there are about 7,000 criminals in this facility, although it was designed for only 400. More than half a million people died in Rwanda due to genocide, so the state is not particularly interested in keeping prisoners. Many prisoners spend the whole day standing in their cells, most even sleep while standing due to lack of space. The number of prisoners here is so excessive that some die of suffocation and others die of various diseases caused by unsanitary conditions and a complete lack of medicine. Prisoners go to the toilet right in the cell where the floor is completely covered with sewage. Because of that, criminals' feet suffer from infections. Of course, no one will treat the prisoners here. They will simply have their toes or feet amputated. The United States ADX Florence It's a maximum security panel facility. According to its former warden, it is considered a cleaner version of hell. 
This prison is for extremely dangerous criminals who are in solitary confinement all the time, measuring 2 by 4 meters. Just one hour is given to criminals in another cell where they can exercise or just walk around. All items in such cells are made of concrete, like the chair, the table, and the bunk. There is a sink and a toilet in the cell. Some prisoners can be transferred for good behavior to an improved cell with a radio and a TV. The United States Guantanamo Bay Detention Camp In this dreadful camp, they pretended for a long time that all human rights were respected there. But all secrets are revealed, so when all the atrocities taking place in the camp were uncovered, the public was shocked. In this prison, the prisoners who were subject to trial by a special military commission are held. Most of the prisoners were never formally charged. By the way, many of the people in this camp are Muslims. According to them, they were subjected to various kinds of tortures, such as imitation drowning, beating, listening to music as loud as possible, and sleep deprivation for long periods. Syria – Tadmor Prison The Tadmor Prison is considered to be one of the worst prisons in the world. It is located in the middle of the desert. Initially, it was intended for war criminals. After a Muslim organization tried to assassinate the Syrian president in 1980, his brother ordered the murder of all the prisoners in the Tadmor prison. Thus, between 800 and 2,000 people were killed, according to various estimates. After that, the prison became not only a colony for the military, both political prisoners and criminals who often died of torture were kept in custody here. Prisoners were beaten with whips, metal pipes and boards, drugged or had bags put over their heads and beaten up to extract confessions. This colony even had a specific yard for the corpses of prisoners. Some of the prisoners try to form a group to resist the harshness and impunity of the wardens, but all their attempts were suppressed. Here there were deserters, especially dangerous criminals and former military men. Often there were clashes between prisoners, which ended tragically. The Syrian poet described the five years he spent in this prison as the kingdom of death and madness. It was not until 2015 that this prison was destroyed. North Korea – Camp 22 There are more than 30 concentration camps in North Korea where prisoners are serving life sentences for criticizing the state. This is simply shocking because they are not killers, not maniacs or terrorists. In Camp 22 there are about 50,000 prisoners in custody. The conditions in this prison are especially striking. They are as horrible as it was possible to make them. All prisoners here are mostly the slaves of North Korea. They work for the state under harsh conditions and are subjected to experiments. According to a UN report on the protection of human rights in North Korea, these camps are comparable to the concentration camps of Nazi Germany during World War II. As of today, this camp is closed. When the camp operated, it was surrounded by a perimeter fence with electric current and barbed wire. Here, until the 90s, public executions were held every week. After that, the executions were moved to a secret location to avoid riots. The prisoners of the camp were constantly malnourished and hardly ever fed. Here, about 2,000 children die of starvation every year. In the camp, there was a punishment cell, after which the prisoners became crippled and did not live long. It was a living hell for the prisoners. At all times, cruelty in all its manifestations has been encountered in the world. Certainly, some criminals should be executed on the spot, but there are people convicted unjustly or for their political views who live in inhuman conditions. Which prison on our list struck you the most? Share in the comments, give us a like and subscribe to the channel. Until next time on the Other Mind channel. Who hasn't heard of the Bermuda Triangle? How many of you didn't care about the abnormal disappearances in this area? The Bermuda Triangle is a certain area in the Atlantic Ocean where ships and planes often disappear. The tops of this triangle are Puerto Rico, Florida and Bermuda Islands. In the Pacific Ocean, there is a similar triangle which is called the Devil's Triangle. 
For many years, this mystery gives no rest to the greatest minds of our planet. There are versions that the fault of these mysterious disappearances may be the origin of aliens or strange weather phenomena. But to this day, there are disputes and none of the scientists can explain exactly what is happening in this enchanted place. The disappearances of planes and ships are happening quite rapidly. Before that, as a rule, all systems of navigation and ship control fail quickly. The explanation of the mysterious phenomena may be the decay of methane occurring at the bottom. According to this theory, huge bubbles are formed in the ocean, which are saturated with methane. In these bubbles, the density is greatly reduced, which is why ships can't navigate there and immediately sink. Methane is also harmful to aircraft. As it rises, it can distort altimeter readings and reduce the lifting power. In some cases, methane can cause the aircraft engines to stop. This theory has even been experimentally proven. So, in less than a minute, the ship can sink because of the release of methane. Another theory that explains the mystery of the Bermuda Triangle may be the rogue waves that suddenly appear in the ocean. These gigantic waves can reach a height of up to 30 meters. You can learn more about this theory in the documentary film The Mystery of the Bermuda Triangle. Such waves occur instantly and always unexpectedly. No one ship can handle their power. But this is just a theory. A few more theories are moving tectonic plates and strong seismic activity in this zone. The Gulf Stream can also be considered the cause of ship disasters. Thus, a discharged stream appears, which contributes to the rise of waves. The mystery of the Bermuda Triangle also lies in the fact that compasses begin to show the direction incorrectly here. What is the reason for such strange behavior of the devices? Gamma rays emitted by a triangle can cause it. But there are no such rays on Earth, and the source of radiation is still unknown. The source of gamma rays can only be an atomic explosion or another planet. Another unusual theory can be considered as the following, that infrasound may occur in the ocean under certain conditions. Affecting the brain, it causes panic and people start to leave the ship jumping overboard. There were also highly unusual and very exotic versions of the Bermuda Triangle. Of course, they couldn't do without aliens who were stealing people. Aliens take to their world in ships and people to study. In 1965, on June the 6th, a plane disappeared near the Bahamas. Exactly this case of plane disappearance with people on board is often associated with alien abductions because on this day, astronaut James McDivitt managed to see and capture in his camera an unidentified flying object in this very area. Another amazing theory is also related to aliens. So, according to this version, the Martians came to take water from the ocean to the planet. Ships and planes fail because of the work of the alien spacecraft engines, which run on nuclear fuel. A highly implausible but a very interesting theory is that the humanoids living in underwater domes arrange disappearances and disasters. Many theories are being built around the aliens. Another version is that aliens from Venus want to take over the planet, so they dug caves under the water column. For the inhabitants of Venus, such caves serve as strongholds. At a depth of 910 meters underwater, the pressure is the same as in Venus. It's during the flights and dives of aliens that disasters happen to our planes and ships. This is a very fantastic theory that will appeal to fans of movies about parallel worlds. Due to the curvature of space in the Bermuda Triangle, a path to space opens as well as window to other worlds. Another fantastic theory is that there are creatures inside our planet that have built propulsion systems. These systems cause magnetic disturbances, due to which disasters occur. The following theory will also appeal to fans of science fiction books and movies. According to it, ancient creatures, dinosaurs, or huge krakens live in this area, which sink passing ships. For those who love ancient myths, the theory that Atlanteans lived in this area would be perfect. They were the ones who could activate the special device that was supposed to be a source of enormous energy. But it sank along with all of Atlantis. Nevertheless, it periodically turns on, which leads to the emergence of the powerful energy fields which ruin the ships. 
The following theories related to the fractures of the ocean floor, from which gas and steam, unknown to modern science, come out. It is they that contributed to the creation of a strong magnetic field that destroys aircraft and ships. But even when these streams are very minor, they can still cause harm by causing hallucinations that cause people to jump overboard. According to cryptozoologists, mermaids, devils, brownies, and elves, and other characters from fairy tales are very real. They often appear near the Bermuda Triangle and may be involved in shipwrecks. In the anomalous zone of the Bermuda Triangle, disappeared ships go into the future or the past. Here they can pass into the fourth dimension. That is why ships from previous areas, such as the Flying Dutchman, are found in different parts of the ocean. Another theory is that in 1943, the United States conducted an experiment. It was called the Philadelphia Experiment. The purpose of the experiment is to make the ship with its entire crew invisible. This was achieved using strong magnetic fields. It is this or something similar that is happening in the mysterious triangle to this day. The first person who put forward an interesting theory of exposing the mystery of the Bermuda Triangle was the writer Larry Cush. The book was published in 1975. He analyzed in detail all the events and anomalies, revealing many inaccuracies, untruthful and simply fictitious data. The author claims that the Bermuda Triangle was deliberately invented for the sake of sensation. Not such a record number of disasters happens here, and if shipwrecks happen, it's because of the active intersecting sea and air routes. Also, there is a very diverse and complex system of currents, which doesn't give an accurate determination of the place of the disaster. It is in this area that the bottom is very difficult and there are many shallow areas. The weather plays an important role. In this area, there are often severe storms, which are destructive for ships and aircraft. Many missing ships had technical problems and planes get lost and ran out of fuel. All these cases happened quite long ago, when the equipment wasn't as reliable and advanced as it is now. What else do you need to know about the Bermuda Triangle? Inside this triangle, two huge pyramids were found at the bottom. These underwater creations are much larger than the Egyptian pyramids. According to scientists' calculations, these structures are at least 500 years old. What other mysteries and horrors are fraught with the Bermuda Triangle? Only one thing is known. There are a lot more questions about this anomalous zone than answers. This place inspires fear to this day because scientists could never explain this natural phenomenon.